All right. So hi, everybody. This is um, Robin Russo, one of the course designers for Nova's Introduction to Journals in class. And I'm here with my neighbor and friend, Anita Kumar. And I will let her introduce herself and her role in journalism. Hi, um, I'm Anita Kumar, as you just said. I'm senior managing editor at Politico. Okay, so Anita, before we started this, you said that it was a pretty hard question to answer, but I was wondering if you could tell students what a typical week in your job might be uh, like. There is no typical day or week, which is why it's really tough. Um, so my job is can sort of depends on sort of what's going on in the news, right? So I help people. I help people write the hardest stories. So things that have language where it might be sensitive or, or sources that might be secret or documents that we got. So I don't actually know what's coming all the time to me. Um, and so that's why it's difficult. You may, you never know sort of what's coming. Um, one of the other parts of my job is to sort of help with the day to day. And what does that mean? That means I help decide with the editor in chief what we publish each day on politico.com. So what are the stories that we decide to publish? What do we want to focus on for that day? And of course, a lot of that depends on projects that we're working on, but it also depends on sort of the news of the day, right? If Ron DeSantis announces he's running for president, so we're going to focus on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, awesome. You've had a lot of journalism jobs too, so this is not your first stop. Can you tell us a little bit about what led you to your current role? Yeah. Um, I'm, I think I'm sort of a rare person in that I always knew that I wanted to do journalism. And I think sometimes people don't know what they want to do with their life until later. I think that's pretty normal to decide in college or even after college as you're trying to figure it out. Um, but I, I always wanted to knew, I always knew what I wanted to do. So I um, was the editor of my high school paper in Charlottesville, Virginia, and then I um, went to the University of Virginia and I worked on the paper there, the Cavalier Daily. And at the time it came out five days a week. So it was like a full-time job. We <laughs> were there way, paper. yeah, we were there way too often. <laughs> um, so basically people would go to classes in the morning and then they would work. People would gather in the office, um, the student run That's office at one o'clock and we were there until the paper was finished. Every wow. Night. I know. Um, did not spend enough time on my studies, but I, I, uh, my major was, political science and um, they at UVA at the time they didn't have a journalism degree mm -hmm. um, kind of vocational for for um, Thomas Jefferson's University right, that's what right. they said mm -hmm. but um, there was a rhetoric in communication studies but I chose not to do, to do that and so after college I just look for a job it's really different now in journalism people can come to Washington and cover big beats right away, but when I was starting out, that wasn't the way it was done. So you worked at a small paper, so I started at a very small paper in Lynchburg, Virginia, and I went to a little bit bigger of a paper in North Carolina, and then I ended up in Florida at the Tampa Bay Times, which is a really, really good paper, and I was there longer than I thought because Florida has this kind of fun, <laughs> crazy news, and I got to cover all sorts of things. So, and then um, that paper sent me to D.C. to be one of the three people covering Washington for, for that paper. And so I did that for a little while. I went to the Washington Post, and then um, I went to McClatchy, which is a chain of 30 papers, um, and I wrote for all of them because I covered the White House um, for McClatchy, and then I came to Politico covering the White House. So I covered the second term of Obama, the whole term of Trump, and the very beginning of Biden. Wow. So, yeah, it was a lot. It's it quite, was, quite a scene. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went into editing, <laughs> something that I had really, really, really resisted for a long time. But I just, people say, you kind of know when you're ready, and I was just ready. Well, that actually leads really well into the next question. So we've got a basic intro journalism class here, and a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about is how do you find a good story, how do you pitch a good story. So now that you're sitting on the editor side, after all this experience as the writer's side, what tips would you have for a student that's just beginning out about finding a good story, knowing when it's a good story to follow? Yeah, I think that um, I know that the reporters that complain that editors give them <laughs> assignments, um, it's you won't have to worry about that if you have your own ideas. Mm -hmm. And so I always had my own ideas. That was one of my favorite things was to sort of uncover stuff. Um, and I just think the way to do that is talking to the most people you can talk to, right? <laughs> the more people you talk to, the more things you'll find out. And, you know, 
you know, I'll just take the White House because I did that for nine years. It's really hard um, to get anything different. Obviously, there's stuff happening all the time, mm-hmm. and people cover that. Mm-hmm. But the goal is to write new and different and unique things, both things that are, you know, scoops, right, that nobody else has, but also things that, you know, I don't know that you would call them scoops, but they're just, it's new information or a new way of looking at something. And so the way that I would do that is I would just talk to a lot of people. You know, part of each week has to be, as a reporter, taking people out for a coffee Mm -hmm. or for a lunch or talking to them on the phone, even if you don't need anything, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're not looking for a quote for a particular story that time Mm -hmm. and just kind of keeping in touch with people. You know, now, you know, before it was always sort of um, calling people on the phone. I know people text a lot now. And Mm -hmm. of course I text a lot too. (laughs) Everybody does. But I think as a journalist, it's really, really helpful to pick up the phone. It's really helpful to go get a cup of coffee with someone or a drink or have a lunch or meet in person um, and see someone face to face because you'll find out more than you will on a text. A text is more about sort of like transactional, Mm -hmm. like here's the question, can you answer it? And that's fine, but it's going to be hard to find out more information unless Mm -hmm. you're sort of talking to people and, you know, just writing stories. The more stories you write, the more things you'll find out about the same topic, right? So, you know, when I covered the White House, you know, the sort of the most recent time I had sort of mini beats because the White House is everything, right? You Mm -hmm. can cover everything in the world, but I had things that I covered really closely. So one of those was um, about gun, um, you know, legislation and and policies about guns because that's been a big deal with mass shootings. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would just talk to the people that were in the know all the time. Yes, people at the White House, but also you know, the lobbyists and the advocates and the people that were really following what was happening in the White House and in Capitol Hill. And I actually ended up, um, you know, the first year of Biden's term, I ended up being the only reporter, the first reporter, I guess, to have that when he was going to announce, um, when President Biden was going to announce what he was putting out for, for mm-hmm. gun legislation, like his his policies and then suggested legislation. And so it was a national scoop, and the only reason I got that is because I kept talking to people and asking them when something coming, what is that going to be, you know, that that sort mm-hmm. of thing. So, Yeah, so a lot about relationships. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Another thing that we're going to be discussing a lot in this class is what are some of the unique challenges that are facing contemporary journalists? So particularly as someone who has gone from the small town paper all the way to really the big time and seen journalism change over these years, what do you think some of the biggest challenges are that journalists face now? I feel like it really changed in like about 2015 or mm-hmm. 2016. I feel like the last few years have been really different and I'm not going to completely blame social media, but I think a lot of it is people get their news from social media and they're only seeing the things that they want to see, meaning they're only seeing like-minded, you know, mm-hmm. people that agree with them, that's what they're seeing. And so why why is that a problem? It's because it's almost like when people see other things, they see the other view, they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And that's really, I mean, I'm used to people not believing the media because I've dealt with that my whole Mm -hmm. career, but it really took a different turn, I would say around 2015 or Mm -hmm. 16. And I feel like it's partly because of social media and how people are only seeing what they want to see. They're only talking to people that agree with them. And, you know, obviously things have gotten more partisan for sure, but I definitely think that it's, people aren't getting their news from the same place as they were before. And so I think that's very, you know, very difficult. You know, people used to get their newspaper on their doorstep and they would Mm -hmm. read it that way. And now it's just really not the case. And so I think that's difficult. The other thing I would say is that it's really, um, you know, people say things that aren't true all the time now. And part of journalism now is, you know, even if you're not a quote fact checker, Mm -hmm. Everybody has to do a little bit of that. You know, we all have to kind of say what's true and what's not true. And I think we didn't really have to do that as much before, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It does. So on a more positive note, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about a favorite project or two that you've worked on, whether that's something recent or something in the past and and why you liked it. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I got to think about that. I mean, my favorite thing about covering the White House Mm -hmm. was traveling. Um, (laughs) I mean, it's very, very difficult, actually, because you're basically working nonstop. But um, I got to go to just amazing places around the country, around the world, really. Um, And I 
those are some of my favorite moments. But, you know, just because I love to travel and see other things. I'll just tell you something more recently, even though I can't fully tell you everything <laughs> about it. But um, I was one of the editors when Politico um, last year wrote, published uh, the draft opinion from the Supreme Court okay. that overturned, that uh, that eventually would have overturned Roe v. Wade. And then, of course, it was some weeks later that mm-hmm. we saw the the real opinion and it was very similar to what we had published. And, um, you know, I... It was just an incredible um, project to work on for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the ramifications were huge. Yeah. It was a national, international story, and um, it was, you know, won a lot of awards and all that, which is great. But it it was also just really unique to me because, or unique for me, because it was such a small circle of people that knew about that. And it was, um, you know, people, I think there has been a perception out there that, you know, we got this document in some fashion and then we just published it and it really wasn't about that it was really about having to do the reporting and the verification and a lot of work before we could publish it and so um, obviously to be to determine that it was true that the chief justice of the supreme court didn't say something the next day and it mm-hmm. has just been kind of a unbelievable yeah you know once in a lifetime thing that I got to work on so awesome well, and then the final question I always tell my students to ask when they're interviewing mm-hmm. is the one I'm going to ask you, which is there anything else you would <laughs> like to great, add? <laughs> yeah, that's such a great question to ask. And um, actually, when talking to people, it's such a good question because you never know what you're yep. going to hear. <laughs> um, I often have said that, and you will be surprised at what you hear. You'll get, get other story ideas. Stories. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I guess I would just say that, um, you know, looking at the big picture here, that I feel like. You know, I think there, I think that over the years that I've been in journalism, I feel like less, I don't know this, of course, and I don't have the stats or anything, but I feel like less people must be going into journalism or it's just a really hard job and it's gotten harder and harder with all the reasons, all the things, all the things we talked about for all the reasons we talked about. And I would just say, I still think it's, you know, I've never, I've known lots of people that started in journalism and left. And I still never wanted to leave it because I think it's so important to hold people accountable, um, public officials accountable, but also just to tell people what's going on in the world. It's just so important. And so I really do hope people go into journalism. <laughs> There's some really, um, you know, great reasons for it. And it's such a it's such a public service to everyone. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. And Nita, I know our students are going to really appreciate okay. this. Sure.